Hey, good morning, everyone. This is Pat Lopez again. It is uh, Wednesday, January 13th, and I'm back with uh, my colleague and friend, Amelinda Webb. Good morning, Amelinda. Mm -hmm. um, we are making a video today about um, numbers. Um, so we alluded in an earlier video to, to something that I think all of us are experiencing, and that's that I, I think one aspect of, of wrapping your head around this pandemic is um, is wrapping your head around all of the numbers that get thrown at you, right? Whether it's um, percent positivity, how many tests you're giving, the transmission rates, et cetera. And um, it's, it's, it's really more than one person should reasonably be expected to take in, right? Um, and, and we're certainly not gonna, obviously in less than 10 minutes, um, d delve into all of those numbers, but we do wanna be sort of, um, vaccine focused and um, uh, I did want to talk about um, uh, two, two, two different sort of related um, categories of numbers relating to the vaccine. Um, and, and the first one I wanna ask you to, to explain, um, Dr. Webb, is um, for the two vaccines that are currently approved, so the Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna vaccine, what we've heard is that they are 94% effective at preventing disease. Not preventing transmission of the disease, but preventing uh, the recipient of the vaccine from becoming sick should they come in contact with the virus. Um, where, what, where does that number come from? <laughs> So that goes back to the development of the vaccine. They have the various um, trial phases. And this is based on the phase three trial where they have the largest number of participants. So when they set up this trial, they have, um, basically they divide it into random groups. There are the people who are gonna get the actual vaccine that's being tested. And then there's people who get a placebo. So now at the same time, these people have received either the real vaccine or the placebo, and then they go out about their daily lives and the researchers come back and see how many of them in each group, the vaccinated group and the placebo group actually got sick. And then they can compare for the number of people who got sick out of the total population who got the placebo, that gives us a rate of infection, but then they can compare that to the people who only, who got the, the vaccine and compare how many got sick from that test group so that they can actually compare the control and then the other group, same conditions, everything else is the same, but whether they got the placebo or the vaccine. And what that means is the people who got the vaccine, if there were say, a hundred people, only six would have actually gotten sick. And the even better thing is that that's the number of people who got sick, but those people had less severe symptoms. So having the vaccine not only greatly reduces the chance of even getting sick, but even if you do get sick, it's going to be um, an easier time of it. So summarizing a little bit, it's the comparison of the outcomes for people who receive the actual vaccine versus the outcome for people who received the placebo. The exactly. placebo being just like fake vaccine, right? Um, yeah, that, basically it's saline vaccine, solution. Right, <laughs> which doesn't do anything for you. And obviously nobody in the study, uh, no, it, it's a double blind study. So not even the, you know, the, 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 the researchers themselves don't know who is who until, um, until they've gathered up all the numbers so that people don't you know, modify their behavior according to whether or not they think they've received the vaccine. Exactly. Okay. So that's super helpful. So that says that, you know, if, if you know, if, um, like I say, if a thousand people or 10,000 people participated, uh, you know, 9,900 and, um, <laughs> uh, would have, uh, would, would, uh, would not, you know, compared to compared to the control group would not uh, get sick and and the six percent that do um, don't ever get severe disease okay all right so that's that's helpful um this the second um set of numbers that i wanted us to talk about is um it reaching sort of this you know plateau of uh uh you know that could I, be, I mean, really what everyone wants to know is when is this pandemic going to be over <laughs> and how are vaccines going to help? And, you know, we talked about how reaching herd immunity could really help us achieve that. Mm -hmm. And we have an, an earlier video on herd immunity uh, in case you missed it. And for that to happen, a certain percentage of the population has to be vaccinated. And uh, it, 
for different diseases, that threshold of herd immunity is different. Um, right now, the standards, uh, the scientists estimate that um, about 70% of the population would have to be uh, vaccinated in order for us to reach that, that ultimate goal of herd immunity, right? So, um, so we did uh, some back of the envelope calculations for you guys. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, and in terms of the US population, and, and, and we just wanna show you how you can you know, get to these numbers with relatively simple arithmetic, right? Um, so the US population um, per the 2019 census, 328 million people, mm -hmm. right? 70%, and we're rounding here, okay, um, is about 230 million people. Okay, so, um, so that's our goal is to get 230 million Americans vaccinated um, to get to, to that 70% herd immunity. Um, and we just looked this up, right? Do you wanna uh, put that graphic up real quick for us, Dr. Webb? Um, yeah. As of today, January 13th, how many Americans had been uh, immunized? And it's that number up there on the upper left that Dr. Webb is circling. It's just over 10 million, right? Um, so we said, what did we say? We have 70% uh, of 328 million is about 230 million. Mm -hmm. So as of today, we're down to what? 220 million that we have to vaccinate, right? Um, just looking at it, you know, realistically. So, um, First of all, let's look at our current rate of vaccination, which we know is um, is you know just getting started, and it's been a little bit slow, et cetera, with the rollout. But really, what we're you know the first vaccines were given just about a month ago, just about twenty eight days ago, mm -hmm. um, and so uh, that's that's ten million vaccines in thirty days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> pretty slow. Um, the goal, though, I know that the goal is uh, a million per day. That's really sort of, you know, if, 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 we, if we're really focused on it um, and, and all things are, are going great. So we have 220 um, million people left to vaccinate. The goal is a million per day. Let's say we ramp up to that pretty soon by whatever means, how long until herd immunity? All right. So at the current rate, that's 22 months. If we're doing 10 million a month and we have 220 million people left, that's almost two years. That's almost two years, 22 months. Yep, yeah. At the current rate. So, but what about at that like gangbusters, a million vaccines a day? So, if we get to that rate, that means a million per day, that means 220 days, that means about July. Well, that's so, awesome. end of July, right? Yeah. End of July. Seven months. End of July. Okay, so um, I think that's, you know, something to shoot for, right? Um, but it's, it's a really wide margin, right? It's anywhere uh -huh. from seven months to now to 22 months. And so um, uh, hopefully we can ramp up. Um, some of the factors I would say that would um, uh, maybe change those numbers at all is if we get approval of another type of vaccine. Um, that will help us reach that goal of a million vaccines per day. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, just, you know, just whatever it is that we can do to, to speed up getting vaccines in people's arms, right? Exactly. Um, okay, well, thank you for all those graphics. Um, we hope that was helpful, a little bit of back of the envelope math for you um, and helping you wrap your head around this and maybe uh, get at some simple calculations that you can do to kind of help you figure out like, you know, when do we reach the end of this tunnel? <laughs> so um, thanks a lot and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.